two years. Wow. <laughs> two years. How's it going, everybody? Sean Allen here. Welcome to this very special video that I'm posting right now about my YouTube channel, Sean Allen Films, the educational series. Um, <laughs> wow. Two years today. Unbelievable. That is incredible. Can you believe that? Um, September 10th, 2014. <laughs> I am totally in shock and also amazed that I've been doing this for this long. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, for those of you who have been very faithful and loyal subscribers, uh, I want to personally say thank you so much for watching my videos and for liking them. And for all of the wonderful comments that I have gotten over the last two years. I started on September 10th, 24, uh, 2012, excuse me. And uh, what a road. You know, this has been a very interesting experience. And I'm still going to continue on, trust me. But two years. Uh, when I first started the series, the educational series... I, I started off with a dream, pretty much like what everybody on YouTube has done. They started off with a dream, so have I. I came up with an idea of uh, what I wanted to do. I worked at it. Here I am today, two years later. Uh, in, in case you didn't know, I have two other channels besides this one. I have the vlog series, which is Channel Films 2, and the third is the Disneyland channel, the Disneyland video series. That's Channel Films 3. Um... And I have to say that just by looking at how many views and how many people have actually enjoyed watching the videos, it, it makes me very happy. And um, and I'm overwhelmed with the with the just the the wonderful comments, the respect, and just the overall kindness that everybody has shown me. Um, I remember when I first started working on my videos, I was worried because I didn't know if people would be judgmental of me or if people would either like my videos or hate my videos. I'm pretty sure I have some haters out there, but I don't, I haven't heard of any, which is a good thing. I mean, I've tried to keep my videos clean and original and... All in all, just entertaining and educational, of course. Um, and I think I have accomplished those goals because people have commented on my videos about how it's helped them with tests and uh, how some teachers have actually used their video, my videos for some of their teaching. I remember long, uh, like a couple of years ago, there was a class in Vermont that was watching my videos. I <laughs> that was that was a very wonderful comment. That was one of the best comments I ever received uh, for you know when I was first starting out. Um, I know that like maybe the first few videos when I first started off on YouTube were probably not the best quality, but when I look at those, those received the most views out of all the videos that I've done. And I started off with a flip cam. I still have my flip cam after seven years. Uh, I, I use, I still use a tripod, the tri same tripod uh, for all my videos. Uh, I've worked on two different computers. My first laptop uh, that I started using, uh, I've used it for a year. I've started transitioning things over to this new computer because the other one, is, unfortunately, is almost dead. So, um, it's kind of sad because I've done so many projects on that computer. Um, but as the months went by, I started getting better equipment. I started getting better lighting. I started getting better sound equipment, better cameras, uh, and in some ways better HD quality editing and special effects. Um... It's been an interesting ride, and it, it, 
when when you, when I was when I've uh, been researching the, for the videos, sometimes I got a little bit overwhelmed because, you know, I tried to determine how to create these videos in such a way that would be easy to understand, easy for everybody to f be able to figure out, and you know, myself personally, you know, I couldn't do it alone. I had to do it with other people, other people. Uh, that's when I created my other characters. Um, Professor Word, Inspector Bracket, um, Farmer Ted, and Professor Biochem. And the student. I can't forget the student. <laughs> um, it's interesting because I don't think I've ever told anybody on YouTube how I actually started off on YouTube with this quest of the educational series. So I have to go way back to 2008 right after I was finishing high school, well, almost finishing high school, I came up with this idea of creating educational videos for myself, for personal use, as kind of like a final project. And it's similar to what, I, what I've done with the educational series, but it was a little bit different. I did use a blue background back then, but I used the, uh, the dresser drawers as my, kind of like my display for me to like put objects on and to put set pieces on um, and I was a lot skinnier back then <laughs> I have to admit I was skinnier back then but the quality of camera was not so great it wasn't it wasn't HD but it was a good start the only difference with the educational videos that I made back then in 2008 was that they were over 30 minutes long um, and maybe 80% of the videos was ad-libbed. Yeah, that's like a no-no when you're doing an educational video. Because you can make a ton of mistakes. And, uh, I mean, I did the research and all, but there be there may have been times where I, where I was saying something that was kind of, kind of strange. And maybe a little stupid. <laughs> um... But I remember my very first episode was about the integumentary system. And it was 30 minutes long. And um, when, I, when I finished it, I continue on to the skeletal system. I finished that. That was like about a 25-minute video. It's a little bit shorter. I started working on the muscular system, but then was like, eh, this is good enough for now. As you know, I've already done the muscular system, and I've completed it, <laughs> working on the nervous system. Um, but I remember when I was recording those two videos, um, I remember at one point there was an earthquake. <laughs> Small one, but not, not a big one. Um, but I did have a lot of fun with it. And, again, it was just me. I didn't have any characters or anything. It was just myself and my camera. Although, I did find footage of a character that supposedly, if I, if I was to think about it back then, it could supposedly be like the, the precursor to Professor Word. He was this character that was supposed to be in this office and kind of had this weird look. And he did wear glasses like this. And he did have this voice. Um... I guess in a way, when I brought the educate. Oh wait, I'm going ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. So after I finished those two videos, uh, we go into fall of twenty eight, uh, two thousand eight. What's my? What am I saying? Uh, we go to fall of twenty two thousand eight. I could say yeah, twenty oh eight. Yeah, and I start off at college, and that was when I was first introduced to the internet because my dad was always the one, uh, doing all the internet work around the house. That was also when I was first introduced to YouTube. And, you know, I started watching all these different videos, you know, any videos. Because, and YouTube was kind of starting off back then, sort of. Um, but it wasn't as big, as, it wasn't as big as it is now. Um, and I started watching all the big YouTubers, you know, back in the day that are still pretty much famous today as well. You know, Shay Carl, I watched Phil... Phil DeFranco, um, Olga K, I Justine, all those people. And I guess in a way they kind of inspired me to <coughs> excuse me, to kind of resurrect 
this educational series videos and even resurrect this other character that I sort of came up with in this series and um, you know think of possible ways on how to create videos for YouTube because when I found out that they were making money off of YouTube and uh, you know being entertaining I was like that sounds interesting maybe I should try to do something that's that's the same thing you know well not maybe not the same thing but make it more entertaining you know more educational <coughs> excuse me I'm hiccuping and coughing at the same time um, so after I finished college sort of finished college I'm still going through college right now but after I graduated back in 2012 that was when I started to really work on the educational series I started writing scripts I started coming up with ideas of what to do with the series. Um, originally, if you guys have watched the Watch Your Grammar series, that was actually my, that was supposedly going to be my first series that was supposed to upload to YouTube. Um, but since I had information about the Human Anatomy series, I thought, nah, let's start off with this instead. So that's what I did. I started off with the Human Anatomy series. I first started off, of course, with the integumentary system, but in this case, I had a script for it. I had three scripts, and I broke it up into three parts. The skin, the hair, and the nails. Um, that's what I did. Now, Professor Word, again, he came back, because I realized that it would be interesting to try a different character. Instead of having just myself, uh, I wanted to try something different with a series, so I came up with Professor Word. And I thought of his name originally for the grammar series, because he was supposed to be for the grammar series, because, you know, Professor Word. Uh, he, later on, we find out that his real name is, well, his full name is Henry Word. Um, but the word, the, his last name, Word, was supposed to go with the grammar so um, it stuck, but I also transitioned, transitioned him into the anatomy series, and thus I came up with Professor Word for the anatomy series, the human body series. But I realized as I was starting to, to do the filming, uh, when I saw him with a microscope at this small um, fold-up desk, it wasn't the big desk that he has now, it was a fold-up desk, uh, I realized that, you know what, he's not the type of professor that would use a microscope or do experiments. Uh, I still have raw footage of, like, the very first, like, I guess in a way, test footage of Professor Word and myself. And back then, I wasn't even going to use a blue background. I was going to use my, my closet doors. But I decided to bring the blue background back into the videos and um, do it that way, like I did it originally without the dresser drawers. Um, although I think I was going to use the dresser drawers at one point, but I decided not to because it takes a lot of time and effort to move that thing from over there to where I was going to stand. So after I decided that Professor Ward wasn't going to be doing all the experiments and looking stuff up under the microscope, I needed to come up with a second character. Uh, so, or actually in this case, a third character, but uh, a fictional character that'd be a second character. So... Like, literally, within days of me starting to record my educational series, I did. I came up with this scientist character. Originally, he was going to be, a, like, a mad scientist. And I guess, in a way, he is a little bit of a mad scientist. He does some funny things. Um, but he's very intelligent. You know, he had to be very intelligent, but he had to do things that were kind of silly, you know? Like, he makes silly comments. Like, um, uh, if you remember my very first episode... Uh, he would say stuff like, um, you know, you need to have proper protection and, uh, you know, make sure you have, um, that you have an adult with you in case you're a minor and, um, you need to have a professional doing all the, you know, all the really tough stuff, you know, and if you remember that one scene where he says something, a line similar to that, he, he's supposed to be a professional, right? And he says, you know, if you case, you know, you, you need to have a professional in case you don't know what you're doing and all of a sudden he turns on the Bunsen burner and it just bursts into flames in front of his face. <laughs> so, um, 
So yeah, he can get a little careless here and there, but he is supposed to be very intelligent and in some ways funny. Still entertaining. Um, so he was a last minute character, yeah. And I literally came up with him like that. And here's the funny thing. When I first came up with the character, I had a really hard time trying to figure out what his name was going to be. Really hard time. I mean, it sounds obvious for his name, Biochem. Uh, in case you didn't know, bio are the first three letters of biology, and chem is the first four letters of chemistry. So, Biochem. Thus, he likes, bio he likes biology and chemistry, so what other way to show his appreciation for those subjects than to have a name? That relates to it, right? Biochem. But the funny thing is, when I first came up with the character, I couldn't figure out what to call him. So, originally he was going to be called Professor Kim. But I thought, eh, it doesn't have a good ring to it. That's when we came up with, or that's when I came up with Professor Biochem. So, in a way, I guess I am repeating his first and last name. Yeah. Well, it's alright. It sounds cool anyway, right? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And I also came up with these special art designs for the characters. And um, after I started recording the videos, you know, I kept doing them. And after a while, I decided that I needed to come up with another character because I was getting to the area of, like, uh, wanting to expand on the different universes of the different characters. You know, we have an office for Professor Word. We have a chemistry, la uh, like a laboratory for Professor Biochem. But I wanted to have something bigger, you know, something really cool. And thus, uh, I thought of, how about a farm? Uh, a fictional farm. Well, my grandfather has this humongous orchard at his house. And I thought that would be the great place to, the best place to do, like, a farm-type scenario. And thus, I came up with another character named Farmer Ted. Uh, and, of course, you know, Farmer Ted, he's supposed to be out there in the south. And uh, he's supposed to be kind of, originally he was going to be called Farmer John, but I thought, oh, that's going to be a big copyright infringement right there. So, because, you know, we got the Farmer John hot dogs for the Dodgers. So, um, that wasn't going to work. So, I had to come up with some other names. Um, I don't think I had any other options, but I came up, like, the second name I came up with that always stuck with me was Farmer Ted. Um, so, Farmer Ted stuck. And it has that ring to it, you know what I mean? So, uh, he became Farmer Ted. And then... Now, uh, I've been working on the punctuation series, and I, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, during this time of me recording all these educational videos, I didn't really add any story sequences or anything that was, you know, something in a, that would keep people uh, to continue coming back to watch my videos. So, I decided that for my next series, punctuation, I was going to add a storyline into the episode so that... Basically, what that means is that I was going to add a story to this series, this educational series about English punctuation. And I came up with a story where Farmer Ted finds a treasure map on his farm. And we have this whole sequence where we're trying to figure out the clues. We go to find the map, and then we find out that or find the treasure. And after finding the treasure, it gets stolen. And we don't know who the person is that stole it. Uh, we have suspicion of who might have stolen it. But uh, we had to find out at the very end who actually did it. You know, it's the who done it type episode, you know, type uh, series. Uh, so for that particular series, I had to come up with a fifth character. Uh, another character, not really a fifth character, but um, that had to be Inspector Brackett. Now, Inspector Brackett, of course, uh, his last name, of course, is Brackett because it, it relates to the whole punctuation theme. So. And Inspector Brackett, for that character, I had to come up with a different voice because, you know, um, I have my regular voice for myself, you know. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Sean Films, the educational series. And then for Professor Word, I needed to um, give him a different voice, so I can't, gave him kind of a, a an Eeyore-type voice because he, he's, he's supposed to be a little bit more older-type professor who's been doing this, like, he's been teaching people for so long, so he's kind of gotten a little bored, and he's got a lot of really old material and stuff, so... So I gave him this kind of a voice, and uh, you know he just has this emotionless expression on his face. Plus, he um, he doesn't laugh that much. Yeah. 
I, you can tell I have fun playing that character. Uh, Professor Bio Kim, on the other hand, he has to be more energetic, you know, like, unlike Professor Word. So, you know, I gave him a bit of an accent, and luckily I haven't really been offending anybody, so I hope I don't. Uh, <laughs> I gave him this accent, you know, and uh, Farmer Ted, Farmer Ted, you know, he has to be out there in the south, and he sometimes he says really funny little one-liners, like, um, there was one time he thought he found some, like, uh, some sort of infestation on his one of his orange trees, or was it his apple tree? I think it was his apple tree. And he goes, "Well, tarn nations, looks like I've got ourselves an infestation." <laughs> I I literally said I actually ad lived that uh, at one point when I was at his house. I thought, "Oh, I gotta add that line into one of my scripts because it's just it's just so funny." Oh, my computer just fell asleep. Whoa, my computer just fell asleep. One second. Um. I think my video actually records when it's falling asleep. Sorry about that. There we go. And so for Inspector Brackett, um, I needed him to be more serious. Like, this guy, he means business. So I gave him this voice. Because he's supposed to be very, very strict. And I gave him this kind of like uh, Groucho Marx mustache. No mustache, you know what I'm saying? He's not supposed to be French or anything. He's just... He's supposed to be strict in what he's saying. And he doesn't laugh either, so he has that trait like Professor Word. Where he doesn't even laugh. Ha. 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 <laughs> I don't think I've ever had him laugh, ever. <laughs> and last but not least, I can't forget him, the student. The failing student. Like, in every episode, like, whenever I've done the student, he's always done, doing something stupid. Um, in one episode, there, I, I think it's the noun episode, yeah, it's the noun episode where he's supposed to be uh, given the differences between abstract and concrete nouns. And uh, when he sees the dirt, you know, you can smell dirt, you can see dirt, and you can feel it, and then you have the taste dirt. He grabs a whole handful of dirt, scoops it up, shoves it in his mouth, <laughs> and starts eating it. Um, the good thing is that that wasn't dirt. It was actually um, chocolate powder. <laughs> but it looks disgusting still, because it looks like it's still dirt. But And then I... I <laughs> it comes out in this big gust of smoke. <laughs> actually, dust, not smoke. It's like my version of the cinnamon challenge, only it doesn't have all that painful reaction in the throat. Um, so, yeah... Um, so I've been having a lot of fun with this series. I, you know, and of course, I've also been doing other things besides the educational series. I have also been doing stuff like the um, <clears throat> the vlog series where I've done special videos where I have gone off to different places and I've vlogged about it. I did a whole trilogy about the Endeavor when it was coming to California to go to the, the California Science Center. Then I, my second video I made... Uh, was when it was on the ground traveling through the streets of L.A. from LAX to the California Science Center. Then the third vlog was me actually going to the California Science Center and seeing it in its temporary uh, location. It's temporary because they're going to be building some new contraption um, for the Endeavor. But I think that it's actually better where it is right now because, you know, it's it's sheltered. You know, it's not going to be anywhere outside. And... Um, I actually do have another vlog at the Cal for the California Science Center, but I haven't uploaded that one yet. Plus, I've done stuff for Disneyland. Uh, and I must admit that it's actually a little bit more popular than the educational series. Um, on that series, uh, the, the channel, I should say, I have uh, been doing stuff like Disneyland ride reviews. I've done meal time at Disneyland episodes, uh, vlogs, special events, a couple of special events that happened recently. Um, uh, well, uh, actually last year, uh, was, one was the D23 Expo at the Ronald Reagan Library. That was where they had the Walt Disney collection there, and they had, like, all these different things from Disney's past, uh, stuff that he worked on, a lot of the movie, uh, props and sets and costumes. I got to see one of the humongous, humongous Nautilus props that they used for the, 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 uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I saw the books, the, literally the books that they used at the very beginnings of uh, Snow White, 
Cinderella, and Sleeping Beauty. We're talking gigantic books, because, you know, these were cell animated uh, movies. Uh, cell animation. I did see a lot of stuff from Marvel when I was there, um, and tr stuff from Tron, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, a few things from the Haunted Mansion, and some things from Disneyland, too. Uh, so, yeah, I got to see some really cool stuff that day. Uh, there was one, there is one event that did happen recently, uh, one of my recent trips to Disneyland that really changed my whole output, my whole, like, you know, just my whole, um, like, not just output, but just, um, just realizing how much my videos impact people. Um, this family has, uh, three kids, and one of the kids, uh, wanted to really meet me so bad, uh, Actually, they all wanted to meet me, basically. But um, they were coming to Disneyland uh, on behalf of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and these kids wanted to meet me. So that was one of their wishes. So I made their dream come true, and I met them. And I guess in a way, it was my first fan interaction. I know people have asked me to meet with them before. Uh, I haven't been asked to go to VidCon or anything like that, but maybe someday. Uh, I am planning on going to VidCon 2015, if that happens, I don't know. Um, but this, in a way, was my first official fan interaction, meeting this family. And just seeing these kids' reactions to seeing me there at Disneyland, uh, it, it truly was magical and just heartwarming at the same time. Um, because now I see what I have done how I've affected people's lives, uh, especially through a, a kid's eye. You know what I mean? And it, it just really makes me... It, it humbles me because, you know, it wasn't by chance that these people found my channels. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they found my videos, but I am still grateful for the opportunity that I got to meet with them to hear what they have said, um, their their father told me that my Disneyland video series channel, they don't actually have television uh, at their place, but they do have stuff on the internet that they do watch, and one of them is YouTube, and they, anybody told me was that my Disneyland video series to them was their favorite Disney show. Um, when I heard that, I... Just deep down inside, it was like, you know, that is unbelievable, you know, to hear that. That they actually liked my show, my videos. Um, I have never really received any kind of compliment like that, ever. Say that it was their favorite YouTube series. I mean, I have gotten comments saying that, a particular video was good, but not actually the entire show. Just hearing that was just so unbelievable. Um, and you don't know how much that meant to me. Because uh, I, I, I'm speechless, you know? It, it just stops me completely when I'm thinking about it. Well, I'm getting close to 30 minutes here, so... Anyways, you guys, two years on YouTube, and this is where I'm at right now. Uh, if I remember correctly, the last time I added up all of my views uh, for YouTube, as of right now, uh, September 10th, 2014, I have over 60,000 views and a ton of likes few dislikes, but not many, but still, uh, and, and this overwhelming, uh, these overwhelming comments that people have sent me about how they really enjoyed my videos, how they enjoy, uh, just watching the videos and being entertained, that's pretty much my job right now, is to entertain people, and I am so grateful that people are being entertained, that people are watching the videos, so, uh, from the bottom of my heart, you guys, thank you. It, you don't know how much this means to me. This has been literally, 
for me personally, a dream come true. And I remember two years ago when I first uploaded this video, somewhere deep down inside, my conscience was telling me, Sean, this idea is going to work. That's supposed to be Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> it's probably not going to. It probably doesn't sound like it, but somewhere deep inside, I was telling myself, this will work. This will affect people. This will be entertaining. This will be uh, your career. And it has been for two years now. Let's make it three. And, um, yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much, guys. Um, this has really been an honor to be showing on your iPod or iPhone or iPad or computer or your television screen. I, I, I just feel really blessed to have been told that people watch my videos and that they enjoy them. And I'm going to continue making videos as long as YouTube uh, lets me do it. You know, unless something else comes up, I'm going to continue making videos. Because I enjoy doing it. And let me just give you guys a little piece of encouragement. I know that there's probably some people out there who are really discouraged about their own jobs. And, you know, they probably are going through some financial difficulties or with, um, you know, just having some hard times, you know. If you're having a hard time looking for jobs and stuff, uh, and if you you say to yourself, I'm not good at anything, find something that you're good at. Um, find something that you find that is something that you would enjoy or actually enjoy right now. Whether that be singing, cooking, acting. There's a whole range. It doesn't have to be any of those, okay? If there's something out there that you particularly enjoy, go and do it. Um, it will take time, okay? It's not going to happen in a day, okay, for you to, you know, get noticed by the public. And I'm not saying that I wanted to get noticed by the public because intentionally I knew that this was going to happen. But, you know, it's going to take time before people start to notice what you do. And it could either be good or it could be bad, you know? But just give it time and try to do your best, you know? If you don't succeed, try, try again, you know? Thomas Edison is a really good example for this sort of situation. You know, when he made the first light bulb, I actually have an Edison light bulb, guys. Here it is. I recently got this for Professor Ward's office, but um, this is an Edison light bulb, okay? You know how many times it took for him to make a light bulb? A thousand times. By around bulb 500, after it busted, people were going to give up. You like his, his helpers? He's like going, we have found 500 different bulbs that don't work. There's got to be another 500 that won't work. We're not going to stop until we find that bulb that works. And look... We have light bulbs today all because he didn't give up. If this light bulb, if you know, if he gave up, we probably would be sitting here. I would probably be sitting here in the dark right now. I probably wouldn't even have a laptop. But guess what? We have light bulbs today thanks to Edison. And we have other inventions, you know, from all these other different, um, from all these different uh, inventors. Alexander Graham Bell, you know, the telephone, right? Samuel Morse, the Morse code, the telegraph, right? Uh, the first cars, the typewriters, um, anything that you see that you use in your everyday life, those were invented by somebody, right? And they didn't give up. And I'm encouraging you guys not to give up on your success and your career because... Because I know that you guys can succeed at your future goal. And uh, I'm done. <laughs> Alright guys, well that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. 
Uh, I hope that was encouraging. Do your best, and I wish you all the best at your career. And, um, you know, I hope you succeed. And um, if you're in college, good luck with your studies. You know, I'm in the same boat with, as you are. I'm trying to ac accomplish my bachelor's degree in multimedia production. I'm not ashamed at saying that. You know, I can say that. Of course. I already have an associate's degree in media arts directing. I mean, that's something, right? But I'm still working at a bachelor's degree. And, um, yeah. All right, everybody. Just hang in there. I know it's tough, but it will all pay off in the end. And, um, all right. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you all have a great day. If you're watching this in the daytime, if you're watching this at night, have a good night. And um, that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. See you guys next time for another video. Let me say that again. Well, that's all for today. Until next time, keep on learning. See you guys.